Hello, everyone, and welcome to the journey to multifamily millions. I'm your host, founder and CEO of Zana Investments, Tim Little. And on today's show, we have with us me. I can already sense your profound disappointment, but I wanted to switch things up a bit and start doing some solo episodes now and then. I think it will be a good way to break things up, satisfy those who are looking for something a little shorter, and hopefully give you all a chance to know me a little better. All right, so without further ado, I wanna give you guys my backstory and how I got to where I am today. And to be clear, here is not a destination. Like many of you, I'm still trying to figure things out and find my way. Going back, way back, I grew up in Connecticut and later New Jersey before finally moving to Deltona, Florida, where I went to high school. If any of you have heard of Deltona, then you probably know that there wasn't a whole lot going on over there, and my friends and I wanted nothing more than to leave as soon as possible. Luckily, my dad informed me that he didn't have any money for me to go to college, so the Army became an appealing option. I didn't know much about it, but I did know I would get the chance to travel, and they would give me money for college. So, sounded like a plan. After two and a half years of seeing the world and learning how to blow things up, I got out of the Army and went to Florida State University and got a degree in international affairs, which was useful because I was also an ROTC and went back into the Army, this time as an officer. This is going to be a trend, this whole going back to the Army thing. So after five more years in the Army of seeing other less attractive parts of the world where people were trying to kill me, I decided to get out and attend grad school at the University of Denver. A few years prior, I had started to become real estate curious, shall we say? after reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but I got distracted and it fell to the wayside. It took a little while for me to come back to it to where I could focus on it again. I finished grad school with a master's in global trade and an MBA, along with about $130,000 in school debt. Fortunately, I also left grad school with an amazing girlfriend who later became my wife and the mother of my children. So not a bad outcome. That school debt did hang over me though, like a dark cloud. And my biggest priority at that point was really just getting rid of it as soon as possible. It really felt oppressive and felt like I wasn't able to save or do anything that I wanted to do for retirement and stuff like that with this really huge debt just hanging over me every day. So the next thing I did was I made a plan, right? So first I consolidated all those loans into a single payment with a lower interest rate. Up to that point, I had there's probably four different payments that I had to send out over multiple loans. And they had varying interest rates, anywhere from 2.5% all the way up to 8%, which is a lot of money when you're talking about 20 or $30,000 loans. So I was able to consolidate that debt into a single payment at around 5%, something like that which made it a much more manageable and just easy to deal with. And so instead of paying the minimum, I really started hitting it and was paying, I'd say about $1,500 a month on my school debt. So not, not quite twice as much as I had to, but definitely more than the minimum. And I was only able to do that because my girlfriend at the time and I were living below our means. So we were in Washington, D.C., but we bought in what most people would consider the ghetto because it was not supposed to be an up and coming neighborhood. And that's what we thought we could afford. We weren't willing to pay 100 or 150,000 more dollars just to live in a little bit nicer neighborhood. So we also didn't go out nearly as much as some of our friends who were in their 20s and 30s. Sure, we went to a boozy brunch now and then, but it was usually only if we found a, a Groupon deal that was like two for one. So by living below our means, I was really able to start chipping away at that huge debt that I had hanging over me. Next, and the final, perhaps less obvious step that I took was investing in real estate, right? So I got back into real estate and I thought, granted, I still got this debt hanging over me, but at the same time, if I'm making more money from an investment than the interest rate on the debt that I have, then I'm pulling off like an arbitrage thing right there. So I figured if I was able to increase the income from assets, 
that would just benefit me more in that I'd be able to pay the debt down that much faster. So in 2014, I bought my first duplex and this was in Richmond, Virginia. And I bought that for $85,000. And I get it, that is ridiculously cheap. But again, I was living in the DC area and there was nothing within a few hours that I could find within the DC area for 85,000, let alone a duplex. So going down there and even to a rough neighborhood of Richmond, I was able to find this very old duplex for 85,000 and had to put about $20,000 down on that, which was a lot of money for me at the time, especially again with the debt that I had hanging over me. But I tried to look at the long-term picture and think of the value that I was gonna get at it over time. Of course, I did my homework too and ran all the numbers and saw that we'd be getting between $100 and $200 cash flow every month from this. Of course, that's always in ideal conditions and conditions are almost never ideal, but we were more than breaking even, so I couldn't really complain there. But within a few months of me buying, one of the tenants did stop paying and skipped out, leaving all their stuff behind. So one of my first introductions into real estate investing was having to deal with an inherited, non-paying tenant who left their stuff, and I had to pay thousands of dollars to get all of their junk right down to the toothbrush, all moved out. This was my welcome into real estate investing. Despite those setbacks though, I could see the concepts working. The challenge now was, how could I scale this? Especially with the hefty down payment requirements. Like I said, on that first duplex, I had to put 25% down. That was just the requirement from the bank. And I didn't see that as being feasible moving forward just because of how long it would take me to save up for those down payments. And that's when I discovered syndication. Here was a way I could get in on bigger properties, make more money, and help other people make more money too. Like all of you, I just started doing as much research as I could. I listened to hours of podcasts, read tons of books, and went to a few conferences. Finally, I decided I needed to take the plunge and try myself, so I passively invested in an apartment complex in San Antonio in 2017. I was about to go on a deployment anyways for the Army Reserves, and since I was gonna be gone for almost a year, I really wanted my money to be working for me while I was gone. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous about handing over my 25,000 to that syndicator. I had watched a lot of American Greed and I knew how some of these things go down. I didn't want that to be me, basically. But I vetted the sponsors, I vetted the deal, and felt comfortable moving forward. And at a certain point, you just, you have to take that leap of faith. You don't do it without doing your due diligence first, but at a certain point, you have to take action. And that's what I did. And I gotta tell you, when I got that first distribution check, I definitely let out a little sigh of relief. And I think the light bulb went on that, hey, this is a real thing and this concept works. And I actually saw it working for me. And so this was the proof of concept that I needed to go all in on multifamily syndications. So after getting back from that deployment, I met a great group of guys at a multifamily conference in Tampa, and we decided to partner up and take down a 59 unit portfolio there in Tampa. Now, th this was, I wouldn't say it was a mess, but here you had a, a bunch of dudes who were scrappy, and they were really excited after going to one of these multifamily conferences. None of them had a whole lot of experience, but we all just wanted to get a deal done. And so that's how it worked out. First, they came to me and said, hey, Tim, you want to be a passive investor in this deal? And I was pumped. I was like, no, any capital I got, I want to put it in my own deal because I want to be a GP, this, that, and the other. And I continued to look for deals, but it's not easy to find deals, right? You got to do a lot of underwriting and just find ones that make sense. And so they came back to me a couple months later and they're like, hey, if, you, if you're still looking to get into a deal, we might be able to cut you in. And so that's where I used the opportunity that I had with the assets that I had, one being capital, capital to the table, and the other being my location and expertise. I was in Tampa where the deal was located so I was able to be boots on grounds. So 
that was the value that I was providing to them, right? And so they brought me in as a GP on that deal. And that became my first official deal. Thanks in part to COVID and just the crazy environment in Florida that that created, that deal worked out great. Rents were going through the roofs, even though this property was really C-class. I'll just say really C-class. That, that neighborhood never turned around, but it really didn't matter with that environment. Rents just kept going up anyways. And yeah, we certainly improved the property and made it better, put some paint on there and improved the, uh, the parking lot and everything else and made it a better place to live, made it safer. But it, I wouldn't say we turned it into a B-class. It just was never going to be a B-class. But we still made a lot of money off that deal and we did it in a very short amount of time. In what was projected to be a five-year hold, we were able to go full cycle on that deal in less than three years. And in doing so, we were able to get about a 17% IIR and I think like a 1.7 equity multiple. So that was definitely nice to go full cycle on a deal. And part of that is luck, maybe timing, but you can't discount that. I'll take it. After that, things started to move pretty quickly and I became a general partner on several more deals. Today, I'm partnered on 457 units valued at over 60 million. Not only do I get to help people diversify away from the volatility of the stock market and into an asset they can actually see and touch. But through this podcast, I also have the privilege of talking to some of the smartest people in the business. So there you have it. My how I got here story. I really appreciate all two or three of you that are listening to this podcast. And if you're learning something or avoiding a mistake that maybe my guests or I have made, then it's already worth it for me. So take care. And I look forward to seeing all of you do great things on your journey to multifamily millions.